I'm going to go ahead and move on to our similarity tools. So if I click on this, you'll notice here are all of our buttons. Remember before in the classic view, we had some of these options down here in the bottom. Now they're all here. They're all expandable. We're trying to uh, make the page a little nicer looking, give it kind of a facelift, and this helps. So if you click on it and we click on 75, it gives us our match overview. Here are all of our largest matches. You can see they're color coded for number one to number one. And if you scroll down, you can see number two to number two and six to six and likewise. If I was to click on this little arrow, this will actually break down all the matches that reside within this 18% match. So if I click on this arrow, it opens up all of our matches under that 18%. So that 18% match is out of a word count of my paper. And you can see it goes all the way down to 54321 that there's a 3% match from this student who submitted this to De Anza College. They had a 3% match of that 18% that I had. So it's going to find all those matches that reside in those larger matches and let you know where they came from. And in this case, it came from De Anza College. Now, you could reach out to this instructor and ask them if you could see their paper. We can't guarantee that they're going to give you access, but you can ask. The other thing to keep in mind is if you are going to try and track down the original paper and try and reach out to that instructor, keep in mind all we have to go by is an email address that was given to us. So if they're an adjunct or just no longer there, that email is going to fall on deaf ears. So please just keep that in mind if you haven't heard back them, if you do reach out to them, that that's, that's our one limitation there is that it's going to go out to the email address they use to create that account. Okay. Now that goes for student papers. Now any of these, internet source, you can see, brings up our match within the context of this internet source. If this is too small and you would like to see a larger view, you can click on the full source view and it's going to bring up this article along with what matched inside this article and the entire article. You can also click on the link and actually open up that website. Okay. So that was within the match breakdown. You can easily go through, check submitted papers, Salt Lake Community College. So you can see how many students across the country, across the world, have used the same 18% I used. And I just randomly created this paper by grabbing random paragraphs off the internet but you can see how many matches there were from something I just grabbed randomly. So you can see what a good job Turnitin does of catching all of these different matches for you to look into. So that is our match breakdown. Um, you do have the ability, if you want to, to exclude some of these sources. So if we get down to the smaller ones and you just don't care, you can come over and exclude and choose those. Maybe you just want to get rid of everything up to 3% and click exclude and those will drop off your list. Okay, so that is the match overview, which is your largest matches. If we click on our layer here and open it up, you can see we have our all sources view. If we click on that, it's going to give us every match. And what you might remember from the old classic view is that that match overview and that all sources view were what found right here. That's what we're looking at now. Match overview, all sources view. And all sources is every single match all the way down to the smallest percent. You still have the ability to exclude if you want to. And those will drop off the list. If I open this layer back up, we now have our filters and settings. Now if I click on that, you can see I have the ability to add some exclusions. So if this is a research paper, maybe I want to exclude quotes. Maybe I want to exclude bibliography so that it doesn't count against my originality score of 75. If this was a research paper and I excluded those items, this 75 might drop down to a 50. Um, so something to keep in mind. When you're creating the assignment, you have the ability to choose exclusions on a global assignment level that will affect all student papers. But you'll see that you also have the ability on a paper-by-paper -paper basis to exclude those items as well. So it's up to you um, whether you want to make it across the assignment or just something that you might occasionally do on your own, depending on the student's paper you're looking at. You also have the ability to exclude sources. So if you find two word matches, it will exclude that whole source that if it's two words or less. Then you also have the ability to exclude by percentage. Just keep in mind that by percentage, it's percentage of word count of the paper. 
So if I choose 1%, that may not sound that large, but if it's a thousand word paper, that's 10 words, that might be a pretty large match. So just something to keep in mind. And then also don't exclude by size if you don't want to. Once you've chosen those exclusions, you can apply those changes and it will you'll automatically see that score drop most likely. Or you can generate a whole new report based on these exclusions if you want to as well. And then lastly, you have the ability to turn off the multicolor highlighting from our matches. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn these off. Let me close that out. Open this back up for us. And our last button here are our excluded sources. So here's all those items I chose to exclude. So I can restore them all back right now, or I can just choose which ones I want to bring back and I can restore those two. And now those two exclusions will now show up in our match overview and our all sources view.